Welcome back to Master Glass. I'm your host, Livio, and today I have with me on set an American hero, Will Summers. I can't wait for you to hear his story, as well as the story of these three amazing award-winning bourbons, Horse Soldier Bourbon. Let's get into it. Will, I, these are words that you would think anybody would say, but I am genuinely happy you're here today, and it's just such an honor to have you here in Las Vegas on the set of Master Glass to talk about you, yourself, your bourbon, and your life. And uh, why don't we just start with that? Tell me a little bit about Will. Who are you? What are you all about? All right. Well, thank you for having me on Master Glass. This is a great program. Uh, I am, uh, so Will Summers, 25 years in the military, uh, married to my beautiful wife, Dawn. We have 11 children, no twins, six boys and five girls, and they range from 21 to three years old. And we live on a little family farm in East Texas. Wow, East Texas family farm, 13 people in the house. So I'm assuming that other than love and food, uh, there's probably a little bit of bourbon involved as a nightcap or oh, something. Oh yeah, that's it. That is the, that's the show ender at the end of every day. Nice bourbon it. before you hit the rack. I love it, I love it. Now you represent this very cool lineup of bourbon whiskeys called Horse Soldier, which I'm excited to taste and I'm excited to talk about. But before we do all that, can you give just everybody a little bit of a rundown? What exactly is a Horse Soldier? All right, well, Horse Soldier is a nickname we earned in Afghanistan. Right after 9-11, our country deployed 12-man teams of Army Green Berets from 5th Special Forces Group into Afghanistan. We linked up with a warlord and we discovered that we were gonna be fighting against Taliban and Al Qaeda from horseback. And so hence the name Horse Soldiers. It was kind of a, a little poke from our buddies really. And they're like, oh yeah, the Horse Soldiers, you know, <laughs> um, anything to, to take a poke at each other. But after transitioning out of the military, we sort of wanted to keep the band together. You know, mm -hmm. we were comfortable with each other. We had become each other's family mm -hmm. over the years and decades that we had known each other. And we decided to, to venture out into bourbon and make an American spirit, bourbon. Wow. Well, I've always, I, you always hear that, mm. uh, you know, bourbon is a spirit of the brave people and definitely a lot of bravery going on. So there were only 12 of you when this That's right. happened. And how many, did you have any children at the time? I had two. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. Very, very impressive. Well, uh, let's go ahead and uh, taste this lineup, shall we? Let's do it. Yeah, we'll start with the straight. Let's do it. If you don't mind passing those glasses, yep. I'm happy to. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Very good. Now, oh, do we need any water for this, Will, you think, or should we just taste it as is? I think, I think neat is the way to go. Neat is the way to go. Okay. I'm with you. So this is our straight bourbon whiskey. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. It's a high rye mash bill. We aged these three to five years, and we served it at 87 proof because we're just convinced that it tastes better there. Okay. Basically, that's it, is we tasted it through a, 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 a variety of different proofs, and 87 just hit. It, just it hit, just, huh? Very nice. all of us, the same. Mm. Cheers. Cheers to Let's you. Let's try. American spirit. I get a lot of little orangey mm -hmm. notes to it. A lot of orange. Maybe a little like a, I want to say toffee, but more like a, I don't know. Yeah, there's a little toffee note to this. Really nice on the aroma. I love the color, by the way. Yeah, a that. lot of spice. I get, you know, the cinnamon, mm -hmm. orange, definitely. Mm -hmm. Almost a ginger, but that's, I think that's the rye. Mm. Mm. Very nice. Very, very nice. Yeah, the orange is still there, right? Very dominant. That ginger popped through a lot more now that I've swallowed it. Um, and again, that I want to say like an almondy, walnutty flavor to it that I'm really digging. Those caramel notes that are typical of a bourbon, but super clean. Like what I see here is it's a, it's a, it's a well distilled distillate, right? Yep, Sometimes absolutely. you can tell when things are a little bit like, I like, I love craft spirits, sure. uh, but some of them, because they're made in small distilleries and they haven't figured out efficiencies yet, you can detect it. Absolutely. This is just made <clears throat> super clean, super awesome. Big, big, bold flavors, and it's probably due to that high proof as well. Um, so delicious. Um, and, and by the way, can you tell me the story about the mold of the bottle? I know there's yeah. something going on here. Sure. 
So the, the symbol on the front of the bottle is the America's Response Monument, the Special Forces soldier on horseback. It's the only monument at Ground Zero in New York City. Oh, wow. When we, when we went to New York City to dedicate the monument, the Port Authority of New York City gave us um, an I-beam from one of the Twin Towers. They had kept back a portion of these I-beams for national monuments. They gave us one. We took a portion of that I-beam and made St. Pete rise. So we used it as a national monument and then we took a portion of it and we reforged it into our bottle molds. So wow. every bottle, every drop of bourbon is actually touched by ground zero steel. In, in memory of, of, of such an important day in not only America, but in world history. That's awesome. Absolutely. Awesome, awesome. Uh, shall we move on to the next yeah, bottle? Yeah, let's go to the small batch. Uh, all right, let's do small some Small batch is the first of our weeded bourbons. Okay. It's 95 proof. These are usually six to eight years in the barrel. Okay, six to eight. And um, I, I get a lot of the candy notes in here. It's a lot older, more mature, uh, very smooth, really a soft bourbon, I think, on the palate. Well, cheers to this cheers one. Cheers to you. Excited. Yeah, this is a... Oh, softer, yeah. for sure. Yeah, a little bit of a uh, tartness. A little huh. tart, you know. I do. I've yeah. never detected that yeah. before, but and maybe right. And maybe that's more gingery, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes... sometimes. I'm, I'm full bore candy notes on this one. I yeah. get the, the vanilla forward, and you'll see it in the in the palette. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of caramel. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm. Oh yeah. This is our go-to. Mm. You know, sometimes people just tell me, "Leave it." Why do you go mm, when you haven't even swallowed it yet? Because if the mouthfeel is unbelievable, <laughs> yes. it's yes. the first. My brain just goes mm, and the mouthfeel, boom. <clears throat> It's so velvety, nice, and Thank just you. slick. I agree. And absolutely delicious. If you get that velvet heaviness, mm -hmm. it's um, it's like it's like ice cream melting in your it, mouth. Exactly. You want it to stay there, mm -hmm. uh, opposed to like a stripped alcohol feeling. Mm -hmm. That immediately, I already like the bourbon if it starts right there. Such and this a, has a good great call. Feel. I have to take another sip of this one. Mm. Oh. It can be a three sipper sometimes. It sure can. And you know what wheat does when I usually when I taste a wheat at bourbon? Uh, I get a spice, not the spice that I would get in a in a rye spice, right. um, which is more, I don't know, peppery. I get more of a, like a baking spice. It just kind of helps boost up those other flavors. It does. And it's so nice. They're so different, but they're so cool in their own little way, right? Like it, <clears throat> it, it, it's hard to say... Uh, which one I like more because it really depends on what I'm doing like every day I would probably go with the small batch um, But in 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 a really cool cocktail. I would probably keep the small batch for the sipping. It's a sipper. Yeah, yeah. for the sipping. I would it's just for mix friends man. Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. I dig it I'm gonna move these down okay. uh, By the way, um, I don't know if if it's disclosable, but do we know what a small batch means for you guys? Yeah, sure. That's for us. It's seven to eight barrels Wow. So we select seven to eight barrels to achieve a very consistent flavor profile every time. Oh, I love and that. we, you know, our, we, we say the, the, the direction is perfection. Mm -hmm. And so we're always trying to keep things where every time you come to Horse Soldier Bourbon, you get the same high quality product. I dig it. I dig it. <clears throat> seven to eight barrels. Now, the reason why that's important for the viewers out there is that small batch is a non-defined legal category. That's right. It just means a smaller portion of the barrels that are in a distillery. Now, if your distillery has two million or if your rack house, Rick house has two million barrels, then a small batch could be 10,000 barrels. Right. <laughs> right? That's just smaller. Right. But in this case, we're talking seven or eight barrels. Pretty impressive. Yep. All right. And what do we have here? This is the reserve. This is our barrel strength. So same mash bill as the small batch, high wheat, uh, just at barrel strength. I, I believe we're tasting 117.7 uh, today. Nice. And this, this is the nightcap, baby. This thing is um, very robust, full flavored, uh, just a fantastic sipping bourbon. This is for good friends, you know, mixing. Everybody, every day, this is for special people at the end of the night. And I think it's just, 
it's kind of like a thank you bourbon, mm -hmm. you know, thanks for spending your time with us, for coming with us, here's something special, mm -hmm. you know? I love it. Speaking of special friends, by the way, how many of the original 12 that dropped in, in, in Afghanistan the first time mm -hmm. are actually involved in the brand? Is there, in one capacity or another? Yeah, so one capacity or another, four of the original Green Berets, and then we have two of our CIA guys accompanying us as well, kind of coming out of the dark side. We love having them around, Alex and Dave. Uh, so six all together, um, a handful of what we call initial invaders, all the guys who led the invasion into Afghanistan. We have another handful of those guys with us, several veterans from across the board, anywhere from Desert Storm forward. Mm -hmm. and, um, and now we're bringing in <laughs> Uh, you know, non-veterans because, you know, we have to, we have to compliment what we don't know. Mm -hmm. And so we have media people and advertising people and they're just mm -hmm. helping us, you know, get to the next rung on the ladder. Mm -hmm. It's a great team. It's a great family. It. So I'm curious. I just want to dig more inside of the how the organization goes. <clears throat> so it's all these very brave, bold, you know, alpha male, whatever we want to call them, uh, dudes. Is there ever any rebuttals or uh, competition going on internally with you guys? Ah. Friendly, I'm assuming. Friendly. I'm there's, assuming. There's always um, competitions and showing up of one another. The <laughs> nice thing is is that we're at a place in life where, you know, we're all 50 plus. Um, we, we use our skills and talents and experiences to complement each other, but uh, there's, there's never a lack of tomfoolery. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're always going to have somebody who's gunning for you from somewhere. It's, uh, you know, it's the mentality of never be the last guy to show up for work because you're, you're coming into a wolf pack, you know? <laughs> so it's, it's, a fun, it's a fun environment to be in. They're yeah. great people. You well, know? cheers to that because I'm sure you. you guys have each other's back. This is it. That's right. Oh, this is much more bold. Much more bold. It feels like somebody dropped a couple of coffee beans in yeah. there and I'm just smelling them, yep. right? Now, you said it's the same mash bill, just higher in alcohol. It's just straight out of the barrel. Just straight out of the barrel. Okay. So whatever it comes out is what it is. We, yeah. we hit a 126 this year. Wow. Which is significant. Bourbon is barreled at no higher than 125. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it's obvious that you're a new kid on the block if you're coming out with these 115s, 110s, you mm -hmm. know, lower than 125. But it takes a little time to get to beyond 125 mm -hmm. so it was uh it's like a your first whisker you know it's right. like hey we're coming <laughs> we're, through we're we're one of the people we're one of the players in this industry now you know so I we're very it. proud of that i love it and i mean the proof is in the liquid this it just, is it's really it's it's, it's delicious and that's mm. that's really what counts the most mm. Mm. there's just a lot of toffee involved in this one Right, yep. um, uh, you know the, the the what do you call it when you burn the caramel, the burn the burn the caramelization, the, the, caramelization, the yep. creme brulee effect of it too. But yeah. a nice little spice, Absolutely. man, bam, yep. right on the tip of my tongue. About it's there, but you swallow in about ten seconds after you swallow, <clears throat> the spiciness just comes in a little bit more, and that's probably also attributed to the higher alcohol because yeah, you're also absolutely. getting you're getting a gentle alcohol burn right and so really 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 delicious i'm going to take you. another sip of this one i am too i might not put this one back down <laughs> i don't blame you oh yeah and again i'm going back to those coffee notes i mean i literally i feel like there's a little bit of, of uh, heavy roast coffee beans just sitting in there and believe it or not that's a technique we like to do with some cocktails when you make frozen oh, yeah. drinks sometimes like a pina colada you throw in a couple of coffee beans in there because they're magic i just they're it's okay. it, it just they add tartness they add a little bit of boldness they just have this way of giving you things and obviously there's not a coffee bean in here but there's a coffee bean in my mouth right, right. Now, which is really it sort awesome. of introduces you to the char in the barrel mm -hmm. you don't notice it at first but then all of a sudden you know it, you, you bring a coffee bean into the play and you mm -hmm. go oh wait a minute right. it's that roasty char that's in there it's delicious it's i love delicious. it delicious so barrels are charred from one to four what barrels we're do you four use? you're a four that's so you the, like the alligator, the alligator char the alligator that's char, right baby. absolutely it's, it's in that glass 
So now is my favorite time, Will, where I get to make you a cocktail. And Love we're going to make a good old whiskey sour. Why? It's probably one of the best whiskey drinks out there mm. that speaks to everybody, right? right? Because it's got that big, bold booziness from the whiskey, but it also has that fresh lemony flavor. We put an egg white in it, and so it kind of frothens Ooh. up. It just kind of speaks to mm. everybody. So I have a couple of glasses chilling here. And um, I, 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 you know, from what I'm gathering, you would probably be in for a little challenge, being that you are kind of a pretty brave and bold dude, Pro arguably the bravest go. and the boldest let's, let's I've go. ever seen on this show or in my life. So one of the things that, you know, as a cocktail maker, we don't get to save the world and dropped in places we don't know. One of our fears is always to mess up on camera. Right? Oh, man. And the biggest mess up on camera is typically when you go and crack the egg, you're supposed to get the white, if you, especially if you're making a, a, a drink like this that requires emulsification, you're basically taking the egg white, you want the white in one container and the yolk in the other, and you see it all the time where they crack in your hands and they break. Oh, so yeah. I'm willing, if you're like really this big macho dude that I think you are, if you're sad. willing to take a challenge right here and crack that egg, put the white in one and the yolk in the other. There we go. Look, I'm from a farm, man. Oh, man. I can crack an egg. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. Hope I didn't jinx myself. <laughs> Let's see. All right. You're looking good. Get this guy open over good. here. I like where you're going, okay. Come on out with the egg white, down. A little back and forth. Wow. Huh? We wow. crack 30 eggs every morning for feeding the troops at home. And so, wow. there we go. All right, like we've got enough in there. We'll there do yep. yolk on this side. Eggs down low, and there you have it, egg Damn whites. It. I could not get it done. Okay, <laughs> I was trying to challenge you. So when you make a drink uh, with egg white, uh, we like to do what we call double shake. We shake it once to create more emulsification okay. without ice, and then we shake it again with the ice to give it the dilution oh, nice. and the cold that we want. Now, the only part of that that could be a little bit of a challenge is that the shaker, which is made of two pieces, sometimes it's tin on tin, sometimes it's glass on tin, it's really designed to shrink with ice because that's what ice does, right? It takes uh, uh, metal and it shrinks it and heat takes metal and expands it. Because there's no shrinking, when you shake a cocktail without ice in the shaker, stuff tends to go in uh, because you didn't create the seal. So go. let's give it a try and see what happens. I am going to take uh, the straight bourbon right here and in it I'm going to add two ounces right in here in the, sh in the, in the glass. Two ounces can also be known as 60 mils for those outside of the United States, just like that. Set that oh, there. Oh, wow. Okay. Now what, oops, why was I going to put that there? Now what we're going to do is we're going to take three quarters of a lemon. Now, at times it's really good to give a citrus a little roll. Oh, yeah, uh, what it does, it, it loosens it up, maybe <clears throat> slightly breaks one of those little membranes inside, makes the lemon ready to be pressed because Good. sometimes they're very stubborn. And by the way, this is a pretty hard lemon here. So I'm, I know I'm dealing with a, a little stubborn uh, one. So I'm gonna just cut off both of the edges. I probably won't need the entire lemon, but I'm going to cut it in half just like that. For now, I'll set this back up here. Okay. And then, Let's it's like good bourbon. We get rid of the heads and tails. There and you go. Keep the heart. To keep there the you heart. Go. Exactly right. Good analogy. So in here, I'm going to go ahead in this jigger just to measure. I'm going to get three quarters of an ounce. That is actually right on the nose. I get lucky sometimes. Beautiful. Right on the nose. Awesome. So I'll pour this in just like that. Okay. Okay. And then the last ingredient I'm going to need is just three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. Okay, equal parts of sugar and water. There you go. There you go, the kiss of sugar. There it is. You Can't gotta go offset wrong. the puckeriness of the lemon. Now, one of the other things that they always say, so for those at home that are mixing whiskey, is it's a, not a rule, it's a rule of thumb, but it's not a, you don't have to do it that way, but lemon tends to go better with darker spirits and limes go better with brighter spirits. Mm. So if you're making something with gin or tequila or vodka, a lime just does the job. When you're talking about whiskey, a dark rum, and or a cognac or a brandy, the lemon just does a little better because they're mellow together. 
Now I am going to kind of shake hard, but I know that because there's no ice in here that I can get a little um, drippage. So I'm going to just- kick back. That's yep. all right. I like that. Just like that. We okay. don't have to be perfect. We don't. We definitely don't. So now in here for my second shake, if you don't mind giving me a, a little ice in here. Sure. Um, I'll, take enough? I'll take a couple more of those. Okay. Thank you. And let's do one more. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. It's a little messy. That's good though. It is. We're... Somebody's got to do the hard work. Oh yeah. So now a nice hard shake. Right. This guy, Dang. man. Gun. Thank you, thank you. Look how okay. beautiful. We'll set that aside. We'll set that aside. What we're going to do is we're going to just dump the ice out. And now in this very cold cocktail glass, I'm going to go ahead and strain. Oh, wow. Look see at how that. you get that nice little foamy texture to that it. That is beautiful. Yeah, I love it. Just like that. Okay, we'll set that over here. And then this drink does not call for a garnish. However, I gotta tell you, Will, these dehydrated fruits have really make it, made it easy to garnish these days. Sure. They don't go bad. You know, once they're, once they're dehydrated, they last forever. When you have a drink with a little froth on oh, it, right on just top. that little float right there will do the job. Beautiful. And I am honored to serve you. Can't wait. A whiskey sour. Oh, thank you, my friend. Is this your first or no? This is not my first whiskey okay. sour, but this is the best looking whiskey sour okay. I've ever had. There you go. I'll take it. Oh man, that's good. good. The egg white is, adds a creaminess with that citrus. It's delicious. It's really hard to put down, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. That's so good. I'm glad you liked it. So typically, right at about this time, right, the cocktail is made, the tasting is done. I'll typically close the show, but no pun intended, hold your horses. Come on. <laughs> okay, baby. <laughs> so we actually happen to be filming today on May 13th, and May 13th is a global celebration of the cocktail. It's International Cocktail Day. And why is that? It's because it was on May 13th that the word cocktail was actually defined. Mm. And so as you can see from the screen behind me, uh, basically it was a, there was a magazine called The Balance, and a politician decided to publish his profit and loss in that magazine. And so on the profit side, there's, oh, I'm sorry, on the gain side, there was zero. On the loss side, he lists all these things that he spent. He basically went electioneering at saloons and bought people drinks. And so you'll see things like 720 rum grogs. Now a rum grog was a rum-based cocktail with hot water and lime juice, um, mm. and um, or, or there was the the slings. And so gin sling. The sling was a cocktail that was basically made with alcohol, sugar, and water, and a little bit of nutmeg. Um, and so he lists all these things as things he spent money on. And one of his line items is the cocktail. It says 25 cocktails. And so on May 8th, the, a reader uh, who had read, obviously, the, 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 the article two days prior, writes to the editor and says, what on earth is a cocktail? And so oh. this is 1862, right? This is, uh, what, 20, uh, uh, I'm sorry, 1806, my bad. Uh, <clears throat> this is, uh, gosh, 80 years before, 60 years before Coca-Cola even existed, all right? So think about how far back we're going. And the editor on May 13th finally responds with, of course, a lot of nice craftsmanship writing. Sure. But at the end, he basically says, a cocktail is a stimulating beverage made with a spirit of any type, bitter, sugar, and water. Nice. Spirit of any type, 
bitter, bitter sugar, sugar and water. water. So at that time when you went to a bar or to a saloon and you ordered a cocktail, you didn't get anything fancy. That wasn't, it wasn't a generic term for a beverage. It was a recipe. It was oh. sort of like ordering, I don't know, a cappuccino today. If you go to a bar in, or a cafe and you order a cappuccino, you're expecting espresso and cream and powdered cocoa on the top of it. Right. There, was a re there was a specific recipe at that time when you ordered a cocktail, you basically got that recipe. Now, does that ring a bell to you as to what that could be? It's got to be the old fashioned. It's the old fashioned, yeah. right? It's, it's very good, man. An you old know fashioned this, cocktail. You, there you have go. you had one of those before? I have had an old fashioned, good. but I'm looking forward to this one today. Uh, all right, well, you know I'm gonna make you one, right? That's awesome. So yeah, so the how did the word cocktail replace or how did the word old fashioned replace the word, the word cocktail? Well, about 80 years after this story, uh, or maybe, maybe anywhere between 50 to 80 years, we weren't there, we don't know the exact story, but right. they started making what was called an improved cocktail. And it was still spirits, sugar, bitter, water, but the improved version had liqueurs in it. See, oh, the old fashioned right. doesn't have a liqueur. Right, it's, it doesn't have Cointreau or Campari or Grand Marnier or Midori. It's all uh, straight alcohol. And so the improved version had the variation of the modification from the flavor of the liqueur. And that kind of split almost the consumers in half because some people liked it the old fashioned way, ah. right? And some people liked it the new way, the improved way. And so the word cocktail was just replaced by i'll just have an old-fashioned right. so hey. we're gonna make one all right what fun all right so if you don't mind grabbing me that glass right there just there one you go. Yep. okay thank you very there much you and so what we're gonna do in here i'm gonna go ahead and add just one little lump of sugar nice okay i'm gonna saturate it with good old aromatic bitters angostura and so i'm just gonna go ahead and make sure that it's nice and full i want that thing to be Really, really saturated with bitters. Mm. You see that? Yeah. That's a completely red um, sugar cube there. And on it, I'm gonna go ahead and just add a little bit of soda water, just a tad. What I'm do is, uh, doing is I'm preparing the sugar cube to be muddled and to give me a little bit of a paste. You see that? Just a couple drops, just like that. You could always add more, but you can never pull it out. That's right. One of the reasons why I love these bar spoons is because it gives me the, uh, the muddler right in there. And oh, there at the beginning, go. you might have to give it a little more, more of a top, but then all of a sudden, you see that? You just get that nice little bitter, sugar, water combination. Nice. Right? Just bitter, sugar, and water. Great foundation. Great foundation. Now, some people like to make this foundation in a mixing beaker with simple syrup, rather than using the sugar and the soda, why not just use the simple syrup? But this was the old fashioned way of doing it, and so we're going back to kind of the original. Like it. And also, um, some people, which I subscribe to this, love it with that, love that little bit of grittiness at the bottom of the glass, mm -hmm. you know? It's a little payoff at the bottom of your glass. Absolutely, you're 100% right. So now to this, right, we have the, spirit, the, the, the bitters, the sugar, and the waters here. We're gonna just go ahead and add three ounces of your small batch. Nice. Yep, it's a nice heavy drink. Now you can do a little less, you can go two and a half, but um, we wanna fill this glass up. There you go, 2.9. There you go. <laughs> yeah, to yeah. be conservative. I'll do that, okay, there we go, that's 2.9. There we go. I love it. I love it. I love it. Now, the, the newer way of making old fashions, because remember, it was called an old fashioned 200 years ago. It's an old, old cocktail. So there was a time when you would muddle in the more modern version where you would muddle the cherry and the peel of an orange when you muddled the sugar. All right. That's uh, something I actually have done before and I enjoy it. Uh, but in the original version, which I'm trying to bring you the original, right? You don't do that. You're just basically, this is your drill right here. Now, if you can go ahead and do me a favor, there should be some tongs over here. Yeah, there grab that guy right here. Now, when I do that, I kind of like to tip it over a little bit because you're going to get a little plop. You don't want right. to slide. Yeah, there yeah. you well, go. Wow, that, that was a big got one. A, got the plop right there. So there you have beautiful little cube, beautiful so old-fashioned. Nice. Such a sexy cocktail to look it at. It is, great and then, color. Yep, yeah, and then I'm going to just add the cherry here with the stem, why not? And then right over here, I'm gonna add a little peel of an orange, just 
give that orange okay. a little squeeze, express the uh, oils inside mm. that orange, mm -hmm. then I'll flatten it back up and I'm gonna tuck it just like that. Just There you go. And here is wow. your second drink for you. Wow. The old fashioned, the bittered sling, the original cocktail, we can call it whatever we want this because all three of those actually apply. All right. Well, cheers. Cheers to you. Cheers to the old fashioned cheers. and the way things used to be done. Yeah. I love it. Mmm. So rich. That is great. What a cocktail. Love. Thank you very you're, much. You're welcome. And you see how in both cases, uh, it's really simplicity, right? We have, we have two cocktails here that are super simple. I mean, we have an, a, a, a whiskey lemonade, basically, just very, right. very distilled, com condensed. And we have whiskey, a, a lump of sugar, some bitters, and water, and that's it. And that's how really great cocktails work. You have to have great ingredients there we go. and don't mess with them. That's the basic That's part right. of it. Just don't mess with them. I can mess this up by putting, by mixing it with a bad ingredient. I can really literally mess up your bourbon. But if I'm using premium and I'm going simple, you know, that's just the way it goes. It just becomes super delicious. So a good cocktail complements, it doesn't complicate a good bourbon. Absolutely right. 100%. Couldn't awesome. say that better myself. Absolutely. So just one last thing I have for you, Will, is... Um, um, I do want to give you a, a, a t-shirt, a master glass. Oh man. Seems like this will fit you. These are high quality. Not only did I buy Next Level, which are the best uh, that we can get our hands on, but they have different levels and I bought the best one of the best. There so, we go. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. And speaking of best, that right, as we, as we got, as we're talking about best, <clears throat> I understand that uh, I would love for you to share a little bit about any of the accolades that your whiskeys have sure. won, any of that stuff. Well, thank you. Uh, this year, we are a first in the bourbon world. And so with the San Francisco International Wine and Spirits Competition, Horse Soldier Bourbon is the first distillery to ever take double gold on all three expressions. So for being the new kids on the block, we are, uh, wow. we're setting the stage for what excellence looks like. That's incredible. That's quite an accomplishment. I judge quite a few spirits competitions globally. And so I know how difficult it is to get a gold, let alone a double gold, let alone a double gold, a double gold, and a double gold. That's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a one of a kind story. Wow, incredible. Well, I'm glad we liked it because I guess our palates are good. Because we, go. we said it's that's good, right. everybody else says it's good. It's gotta be good. It. Um, what else is going on? Anything else you wanna share in your life? Anything, I, the messages out there for anybody to see? And I don't know if you're that kind of guy that's got Instagram or people follow you, but if there's any way people wanna follow you, how can they keep in touch? The floor is yours. Sure. HorseSoldierBourbon.com, Horse Soldier Bourbon on Facebook, Instagram, we're all over. We are expanding our restaurant brand right now with the Urban Still House right now in St. Petersburg, Florida. Nice. Uh, Somerset, Kentucky. Somerset, Kentucky is important to us because that's where we're building our new uh, experience center, Horse Soldier Farms, uh, which will be a distillery, an experience center, Every, everything you can imagine. We want you to be able to come there, comfortably spend five days on the farm, and never do the same thing twice. Wow, so yeah. if somebody wants to sign up for that, they go to the website? Uh, we're, it's, we're, it's under construction right now. Right. And so if you wanna go to the Urban Still House, you need to make a reservation in advance. If you wanna to go to Horse Soldier Farms, you've got about two and a half years to wait on that. Still two and a half away. That's okay. right, yeah, we just broke ground. A uh, very significant day for us. Last year, we broke ground on Horse Soldier Farms, October 19th, 20 years to the day that we led the invasion into Afghanistan. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. really important to us. Damn, that's so, so important. That's and then really I, I, cool. I don't want to slip away without yeah. saying thank you for this shirt and then presenting you with an ODA coin. This is our Horse Soldier coin. Everybody doesn't get one of these. It's special to us and just something to remember this day by. That's awesome. That is awesome. Well, thank you. Genuinely, I appreciate that. Got it. Uh, oh, wow, and there's even another side. That's the fifth group crest right there. The fifth group crest. This is incredible, and I do want to share that with the camera right there. That is so, so cool. Let me show you the other side. 
Well, thank you. And it's a, it's a nice piece of metal here. This there you doesn't go. mess around. This is a very cool. I appreciate that Welcome. so much. Now, uh, if you enjoyed this episode and if you learned a thing or two, uh, please do go ahead and give this a like. If you got any comments, drop a comment below. I'll try my best to answer uh, any question that you have out there. If I don't know the answer, maybe I can hit Will up again there and he go. can give it to me and I can answer for you. But do come back to Masterclass with me, Livio, where you get expert instruction for everyday consumption. All right.